Do you feel comfortable with your digital strategy right now, the way that it is? 100% of the people who answered our poll on this very question said no. And let me tell you, for this episode of Association Chat, we're going to explore how you can change that. We're talking with best-selling author Olivier Blanchard. He is a brilliant speaker, a brilliant thought leader, and a really nice down-to-earth guy. But he has some interesting things that you're going to want to hear. Don't miss this episode. everyone to Association Chat. This is your weekly online discussion for the association community where we warm ourselves by the virtual fire with the topics of the day, welcoming thought leaders and trailblazers alike to join up in this online home for the community. I'm the host and producer of Association Chat, Kiki Latalian, and I'm here with my fabulous co-host, Tamala Blaylock, who is Hello, already everyone. on here welcoming everyone on the show, and Dr. Nabil el Garuri, who is with us, but not with us. He's with us, but not. He's not on in camera, spirit. but he's he's here with in spirit <laughs> and in the chat room, um, and so he can handle your questions and, and type into those as well. Um, we have an excellent, intelligent, funny, smart guest, but really quick before we bring him on, uh, we want to talk about some news of the week that just might impact you or your associations. And so, um, Tamala, what have you got for us? Well, what I will start with, um, what Dr. Nabil had suggested, which are that yes. flights of Phoenix are canceled. Um, today because it's too hot for the planes to land. It's um, north of, was it 125 degrees? So that um, any flights going in and out of Phoenix have been grounded. So the impact of that, if you're having a meeting, um, a lot of flights to the West Coast are not direct and require um, transfer in Phoenix because it's a big hub for Southwest and I want to say American. Yeah. Uh, and it, or also, no, sh we're not, we don't want to shade Phoenix. Phoenix is an awesome destination to have your meeting. So those are multiple issues there that are affecting the community. Right. And, you know, we have WEC that's happening in Vegas right now. Some people who would just be getting in there, uh, some, a lot of people would have arrived yesterday. Some people who are just getting in there might be flying in tonight. And so that's a big thing for the association and, and meetings industries. Mm -hmm. And so um, that might be impacting some of you. Uh, we also had, and, and the thing about that story that I noticed was that um, they're talking about this happening maybe more and more because of climate change yes. and that uh, when it's over a certain temperature that you just, it's, it's dangerous to fly the planes. So how that impacts uh, both the travel industry, but also for associations and our, our meetings, um, that's something to keep an eye on for sure. Yeah. So that's happening in Phoenix. Then, you know, Vegas has to be on the map in addition to Houston, Texas, Right. Um, for starters. So that's definitely an area of huge concern. Yeah. And as we've seen with uh, the Delta and, and United stuff, I, when uh, a hub goes down, then it can cause troubles, a ripple effect over over all kinds. So um, and Nabil, if you are if you guys are watching on Crowdcast, you'll be able to click on uh, the link that he just posted in Crowdcast. So uh, and then there was another story that you you brought up, Tamala. And so what was what was that that you wanted to, to talk about? Well, this um, is an issue that's near and dear to my heart. I'm in membership services, but I also do quite a bit of marketing for associations. And I know one thing that is very difficult to find is a lot of diversity in stock photography. Mm -hmm. And I remember for one campaign, I spent like 12 hours, you know, just trying to find diverse faces and images and stock photography, because it's really important that as we're reaching out and expanding our reach and want to make sure that all of our members and our target members and customers can see themselves, finding that representation in stock photography is quite difficult. So I was excited to read um, through associations now um, and their Monday buzz that there's a new company that is adding diversity to stock photography. It's called Tonal. Um, and Nabil, if you can post that link in the Crowdcast chat, that would be great. Yeah. And what they're doing, they're launching in August. Um, you, I went to the website now, you can sign up and they will give you updates and previews of different stock photography images that, that they have. 
Uh, but it's wonderful to see in 2017 someone taking what was a weakness in our industry and making it into an opportunity to have mm -hmm. expanded um, images for diversity in stock photography. So very excited for that. Very excited for it to launch um, yes. in um, August. Absolutely. But if anyone's interested now, you can go to their website and register and they will send you updates and they even have a few preview images that you can download right now. Yeah, I love that. I think that that's awesome. And I think that if you ever have been in that spot where you're looking and this, this actually applies to what we're talking about today too, mm -hmm. in that if you're creating content, any kind of content, whether it's for uh, a print piece or for your social media posts, your digital posts, um, you know, finding good stock art that reflects diversity, but isn't the um, cheesy, really terrible stock art where it's like, one of each high five you know like <laughs> we can get creative and have artistic photography uh beyond that i think and so it is nice to have something like that that's available and one thing i do like um that's in the article and also on their website is they do education about photographing people with um darker skin but more more melanin and one thing yeah. they bring up is particularly in selfies and what i tell all my friends is that selfie etiquette is that you never take a selfie or use a digital camera to take a photo of a brown lady without using filter. My filter of choice is Chrome. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but I love, I love how it. they also have um, fused education um, with their new service. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's next level. So it's kind of like um, what our speaker is going to talk about today, where it's not only just a product or a service, but it's actually community, creating an ecosystem or community around what they're delivering. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of which, let's go ahead and talk uh, talk about our guest for today. Um, let me get him up here. He is phenomenal. Let me tell you. Okay, you guys. Today we're talking about digital transformation. We're looking at how association executives need to get real about their digital strategies with our special guest, best-selling author, speaker, senior analyst for Futurum. Do you say Futurum? Futurum? I, I say Futurum, but if you want to say Futurum, Futurum it, that's okay. I don't Futurum? I, I will go <laughs> either way. Uh, Olivier Blanchard. And so thank you so much for being here, Olivier. Uh, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's a treat. Haven't, haven't seen you in a while. It's been a long time. And let me tell you guys, um, he has written several books that are all phenomenal. Um, but I'll tell you, this one is like a Bible for anyone who does uh, digital strategy, social media ROI. Uh, you want to have this book. And the, the one thing that I love maybe most about you, Olivier, is that you tell it like it is. I mean, you've been asking people to get real about digital strategy for years <laughs> from the beginning and talking about how it needs to tie out and I, I, to, to actually what our goals are. Um, and so what I wanted to start out with is, you know, you've been involved for a long time from what you started out thinking and believing about digital strategy and let's let's throw out you know the year 2007 to today you've probably evolved in some of the the thoughts that you have about the way that people should shape their digital strategies what are some things that you've learned you know maybe along the way right um well i've i've learned that the more i learn the less i know which is uh, <laughs> kind of, you know how it is there's like a, a moore's law of uh of you know technology progression um no what how my thinking has evolved is that i, I started from a background of uh marketing and product management brand management and business development which included kind of like you know sales of products or services or something as kind of like the the ultimate outcome of everything we did so whether we designed really cool products or created really great marketing campaigns and cool websites and and, and crafted effective communications there was always an end in sight it wasn't marketing wasn't an end unto itself digital wasn't an end unto itself uh, there was there was a, a mission outcome uh, attached to it so everything that that a company an organization an association does it should do with purpose mm -hmm. and so it's it's kind of like the the, the backbone of all of the the whatever evolution I've had in, in my thinking or in, in my insights 
uh, it, there's always been this, this constant kind of like central core thread of what are we trying to do? What are we trying to accomplish here? And so um, when, when you look at digital technology, business processes, hiring, whatever, um, uh, with always that end in sight, it's easier to stay focused on <laughs> what needs to be done uh, and where you need to invest your time and your other resources as opposed to trying to figure out what is this digital thing or what's the social media thing and what should I do with it. Uh, you already know what you're trying to do. Now it's just a matter of taking these tools, these technologies, these processes, these people and saying how do, how do these things fit into, into that, that, that outcome that I'm trying to accomplish or how do my outcome change, how do my outcomes plural change in relation to what I what I'm able to do today as opposed to what I was able to do yesterday. Um, and so one thing I've found with, with digital and, and just, you know, technologies in general, what we call the, the digital technology or digital transformation technologies. So, you know, cloud computing, mobile, uh, you know, AI, smart automation, whatever it happens to be, the IoT even, the Internet of Things, is uh, how do these things help me uh, do what I'm trying to do better or do it differently or do more of it. Uh, and that's, uh, if, if you start with that, then you're, you're already kind of like 80% there. The rest is just kind of parsing out what, I, what you need to use and what you don't need to use. It's, it's just kind of selection of tools and people and processes as opposed to others. Right. Well, I mean, what do you think? So you, know, you you get brought in to help people with all kinds of of problems when they they're like come in and save the day uh, with our digital strategy. You know, what do you usually find when you get brought into these situations? I mean, where where are people usually still going wrong? Um, I, I think where, where people are still go, it, it's not so much that they're going wrong. I think the, the major obstacle, well, there are two major obstacles. Let me backtrack. Okay. Um, okay. One is practical. The other is cultural. Okay. So the, the practical obstacle is that people who are very good at what they do tend to focus on what they're good at doing. And so there's, they're very devoted. They have only a certain amount of, of hours during the day and, and money in their budget. And so um, they, they lack the bandwidth to be able to add on more. And so mm -hmm. if they're trying to run a business or, or do something, it's difficult for them to also start wearing the hat of, you know, new technology tester and, you know, IT professional. So, um, so that's difficult. There, there are some hurdles that happen because operationally organizations are not necessarily geared towards um, uh, change management. Mm -hmm. You're geared towards getting the stuff done that needs to be done today and this week and this month. And so, uh, so there's a bandwidth problem there. The cultural obstacle is when you run into companies, and I run into this a lot, um, whether the company is big or small, you run into cultural obstacles where the leadership is uh, technology averse, is mm -hmm. change averse. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's this mm -hmm. kind of... And it, it's not necessarily an ideology of we don't want to change. It's a fear that change is the unknown, uh, change is risky, and our, our organization's position is tenuous enough as it is right now because of competition, because of stresses, you know, economically, whatever, market-wise, that the more change we, we talk about, the more risk we're injecting into our business model mm -hmm. and the more dangerous that is and less control I have. And so, uh, so what we found, find is that a lot of technology averse leaders tend to talk about wanting to become more digital, about mm -hmm. wanting to invest more in, in technologies, but they rarely do at a, at an adequate pace. It's always, let's talk about it because there's oh, no yeah. risk in talking. And we want to do it, but we're going to push it off until the next quarter and the next quarter and the next quarter. And then it doesn't happen. And right. the fact that they end up becoming, getting more and more behind uh, makes the risk of change even bigger or seem bigger. And the problem kind of, you know, it's, it's like a vicious cycle of, of not being able to catch up and of trying to catch up seeming like a bigger problem and like a bigger risk. 
So practical, cultural, you bring those two things together and they can be a, a, a huge arresting force uh, for any organization of any size in any industry when it comes to, uh, to, to getting with the times and, and becoming more efficient than they were last year. Right. You know, I think that I see that so, so often with many of the association executives that, that we work with. And, you know, just recently I was brought in and I, you know, they wanted to move toward doing something very risk averse, very conservative kind of um, organization. And they wanted to move towards having more of a, a digital presence, but just right at the very top, uh, the CEO was um, not a big fan of social media, period, and thought that it could actually hurt their brand to be out there. Do you think there's ever a point, um, you know, at this point when you're trying to expand awareness and trying to reach out to larger and larger groups that you should just not go in the direction of having any sort of social media or... Is it something where, um, I mean, I don't know. I, I have to, I have to believe it's almost, it's today's version of being in the phone book. Like it used to be where like, if you have, you have to have some kind of presence almost. Is that true in your mind or no? That's a tough question. I mean, the, the, the right answer or the answer that I'm, <laughs> I'm supposed to give, I think is no, absolutely not. So you have to be in social media because you know, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a medium now that uh, is as big, if not bigger, uh, than television. And so saying um, I wish maybe we shouldn't be involved with social media is sort of, you know, like 50 years ago, somebody saying we shouldn't be on TV. Uh, yeah. it, it's just, you know, social media are, are just, you know, a cluster of, of, of individual mediums. Mm -hmm. um, just like television, newspaper, et cetera. And, and so, you know, you can, you can use them to advertise. So at the very least, yeah. having a presence on social media is just planning your flag, having, you know, a destination, like what websites used to be, which they still are to some extent, but you can have a social presence uh, on, on social channels and, and also use, you know, advertising on social channels um, as, as a very effective means of, of attracting traffic to whatever digital destination you want or content right. that you want. The other thing is, I think that, um, you know, in terms of getting your message out there, social media are effective um, in terms of, of creating and publishing content, mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, pitching stories to newspapers and magazines. So even if you're not on Twitter every 30 seconds, you can still use social media through, you know, a, a variety of means from, you know, publishing platforms to, you know, conversations or whatever to, uh, to, to, publish your own content or to highlight right. content that um, that is interesting to your community to your to your audience so there's there are a lot of, of different things that you can do with social media without necessarily you know taking major risks um, and and when it comes to you know the fear of, of social media diluting a brand or or potentially you know bringing risk again to the, the equation with you know people saying negative things about you online uh, or mm -hmm. someone in your organization, um, you know, accidentally tweeting from the wrong account uh, right, when they're out right. partying on Saturday <laughs> night and instead of tweeting from their personal account, they're tweeting from your account and, and posting selfies or whatever that happens. Um, mm -hmm. Those are not, you know, major tragedies usually unless, unless you've done very, made very poor hiring decisions. And the people, <laughs> the people that you've, you know, tasked with, Which uh, happens. With, yeah, with managing your, your, uh, your Twitter feed are sociopaths or, or completely unprofessional, it's, it's mm -hmm. not going to be a huge problem. Um, generally, when there's a problem <laughs> in social media that's really damaging to a brand, it's uh, especially when you're not dealing with, with retail where, you know, for instance, an employee might, might shoot some video of himself, you know, spitting in, in your burgers, you know, in, yeah. in the kitchen. For an association, you don't really have that kind of risk. I mean, it's uh, unless your, your accountant is filming himself cooking the books and posting that on, on YouTube, you, there's not much of a risk. The, the biggest risk there is when someone in a leadership position, like the CEO or, or, or someone like that, um, or a spokesperson saying something outrageously offensive 
uh, in response right. to something on Twitter. And so that's mm -hmm. just basic media training. And if you're in a leadership position in an association, I would hope that you would have a modicum of, uh, <laughs> of, of media training and media sensitivity that would kind of, you know, prevent you from, uh, from making these types of mistakes. Well, media training is a whole different. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I mean, and, and I'm thinking about way back in the day, there was a, an association president who, um, really smart guy, but I remember talking to him about, you know, how he should get out there on Twitter um, because people would really pay attention. And I remember him agreeing to do it, but he told me at the time, he said, I just can't imagine that the president of the United States would ever, you know, take time to do this. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like we both yeah. won that argument because maybe he was right that maybe, <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's a lot there. Well, again, but, media, uh, media training, right? So, yeah, right. Um, that's right. a very nice. But, but you know, it's, it, it's one of those things that it, it's, I think it brings us to a discussion that, that I, I've been trying with it and, and we have been trying to have for, for a long time. And it's that um, social media, as a as a discipline, as a function of, you know, marketing, community management, PR, a combination of things, mm -hmm. is uh, is serious. It's it's a serious business. It's not something you hand over to an intern, for instance. No, no, it's, it's no. not something you can kind of you know do on the cheap. Um, it's it's a real function. It's an important function. And so again, to go back to what are you trying to accomplish? If you're on social media just to be on social media, you're doing it wrong. If you're on social media mm -hmm. to build an audience, to build community, to galvanize a community around a particular, you know, topic or subject or cause, um, if you're there for to, to build awareness and cohesion, fundraising, um, and all these things drive towards a goal, and your content and your engagement are are focused on on delivering that goal or, or moving the ball forward, um, then you realize that you're investing in uh, in the success of whatever you're trying to accomplish. And once you do that, kind of like reverse engineering it back to, you know, the hiring and the investment in, in social media technologies and channels and what have you, uh, it's something that you have to take seriously. And in a way it's, uh, I don't want to say that, that social media replaces traditional marketing or traditional PR. It doesn't. Um, it's, it's an addition to it. But right. if, if you look at all this, as kind of like a Venn diagram. Um, these are all separate things, but there's a lot of overlap. And associations or organizations that are able to leverage social media properly understand um, that, that all of these elements have to come together and where the overlap has to be so that you have some sort of you know, operational e efficiency and fluency and so that you can also kind of um, budget for, for that type of communications ecosystem properly. And uh, right. that, that requires a little bit of, of vision, a little bit of insights, and a little bit of work, actually a lot of work, to kind of put all those pieces together and keep adjusting them until you get the right mix. Well, I think that, oh, I go ahead, Tamara. I wanted to bring in something that one of um, our viewers saying, Scott Osar, saying that most associations I work with aren't change in tech averse. What I see mm -hmm. is that they simply do not have the understanding that they need to know why they should do something different and positive, and the positive impact it could have going forward. Yeah. And going back to what you were saying um, earlier, Olivier, about um, the cultural need, um, how have you been able to penetrate through that cultural um, defense to talk about the ROI yeah. you know, of, of engaging into that? So I think well, a lot of times it's that you hear that it's sexy and it's awesome, they don't really hear the ROI or the yeah. value proposition of engaging in such a strategy. Well, that's that was the whole idea behind the whole you know ROI discussion in the the ROI yeah. book, which mm -hmm. came out of that. Um, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Uh, it, initially, I mean, uh, you know, I'm I'm not an accountant. ROI is the in a way the last thing that should be on anybody's mind when they're creating content or doing creative work or engaging with the public. Um, if I'm a customer service person or I'm a community manager and thinking about ROI, I'm, my mind is not in the right place. However. When, when you're trying to sell a program to, uh, to an executive, to, to a gatekeeper, to someone who actually writes the checks, and you're trying to convince them that you need to invest in this because X, Y, and Z. And you know, again, it goes back to understanding what outcomes you're after and, and why you're doing all this to begin with. Uh, you know, what, what are you trying to accomplish by creating this, associ this association and raising money and you know, doing all these things, uh, putting all these elements in play? Um, 
the ROI discussion for uh, for-profit companies is easier because you can set you know sales targets. You can say, well, mm -hmm. you know, we can we can change negative um, perceptions on this product or your brand from here and just kind of move it to there. And the goal is to do that in the next six to nine months, for instance. And this is what we're gonna do and this is how we have to do it, but it takes manpower and it takes a little bit of technology. So we're gonna, it's gonna cost X. Um, right. So then you can, you can kind of quantify what the impact of changing, you know, negative perceptions to positive perceptions will be on sales, which you can then track back to, you know, the cost of products and whatever. So there's, there's an equation that you can actually work out, like a real equation, not theoretical, um, that, that deals with, you know, red ink and black ink and, mm -hmm. and see if it's worthwhile. Uh, it, it might be that you spend more money than you're actually going to make on the back end. And so the, even though it would be good to move things forward, to change perceptions, to increase sales, what you're putting into the social media or the communications program isn't enough to justify the positive change uh, or the estimated positive change to sales. For associations and nonprofits, the, uh, that equation changes a little bit because you're not necessarily dealing with sales or profitability or, or you know, whatever. Um, but you can measure it in other ways that aren't necessarily financial. So financial, I guess, would be you know donations, for instance, or you know people, you know participating in, in a crowdfunding or, or something, or, or buying things, or you know buying T-shirts, supporting uh, a cause, uh, becoming a member, uh, recruiting more members, you know five a piece for during a membership drive, something like that. Uh, but it can it can be a lot of different things. It can be reach. It could be uh, you know getting five million people to sign a petition. So ROI for for associations and nonprofits can be measured uh, very differently. But again, you have to have some sort of idea of the outcome. You have to be able to turn that into some sort of metric, whether it's financial or not. Um, you have to be able to kind of create some sort of tangible value for the outcome so that you can translate the, uh, the, the financial investment, the real financial investment in resources and time uh, in order to gauge whether that investment is going to be worth you know, the change, the delta in the outcome. And once you talk about it that way, um, two things happen. One, it forces the leadership to reevaluate uh, the outcomes that they're looking for, to reevaluate their goals, their targets, and, and maybe even to become more specific about them. One thing I've found is that a, a lot of, of people in leadership positions, whether it's for profit or not for profit, don't necessarily have targets. They have general goals. Like, yeah, we want to sell more stuff. Okay, what does that mean? What's, what's the stuff? How much of it? Uh, you know, we want to reach more people. Okay, give me a number. Give me, uh, yeah. give yeah. me a date by which you want to reach that number. What do these people look like? Once you've reached them, what do you want them to do? Uh, yeah. So once, once you start having this discussion, you realize that maybe, you know, with some organizations, it's very, it, it, it's, it's very fleshed out. They know exactly, mm -hmm. you know, they can answer just like that. Everything's great. With those types of organizations and, and leaders, um, this discussion is very easy. It goes by quickly. With leaders who haven't really worked it out, there's work to do internally that has nothing to do with social media or digital. Right. Uh, it's right. just they're not as focused on on some of the things mm -hmm. that they should be focused on. They, it's kind of like right. you give them you they're they're telling you they want to go west, but they don't know what city they want to end up in. That's <laughs> right. not a, right. That's not a really good way of of, uh, I mean, of moving forward. I think it's escapist. I, I, I think yeah. it's, I think a lot of them, they're hoping that they throw this uh, intern or this new graduate in and they're like, oh, they're closer to understanding this yeah. new technology. They're going to automatically be better at all of these things. You would never put somebody in that position if it was a layer going out to your entire board, but somehow uh, this communication that's going out to anyone and everyone, um, it's fine, right? Like they're, they're somehow closer to understanding this, this secret language. And of course, that's not the case. I think that what's, what's kind of wild to me is this idea that maybe magically with this person and this tool, like uh, they're going to be able to, Snapchat's going to be the thing. It's going to, it's going to bring in the, the younger demographics of members. And 
they forget, I think, that all along the way, it's the same sort of um, process. I mean, it's all about you are wanting those conversions, even if it's converting to more engagement or more volunteers, more members, more attendees, more publications sold. And um, and there are ways to measure that, and most definitely. But if you throw somebody at it and they don't even know what the goal is, they're not going to feel successful. That's right. I mean, you, you could have the most brilliant intern in the world, and if you don't tell them what your goal is for, for communicating with this audience, they're not going to feel like they've they've really achieved anything either. Right. It's going to be frustrating for all parties. Well, yeah, because they're the tactician. They're not the strategist. You know, yeah. I think a lot right. of us forget that social media is a tool. It's not a strategy. So without a strategy, you know, you're right. just doing stuff. Yeah. And, and I think one of the steps that gets missed with all this is that um, whether you're, you're an agency that, that's offering social media services or you're trying to build a social media or a digital program inside an organization, if you, if you forget or if you skip the step of identifying or, or quantifying the value of the outcome um, right. and, uh, and actually just kind of like, you know, mapping it out, uh, you're, you're not going to be able to, um, to create a, an equation in the decision maker's head of it's worth it for me to invest money and risk into this program in order to get to here. Um, yeah. They're not going to be able to gauge the, uh, the value of that investment because they haven't figured out the value of the outcome. And so if, if you can start with the value of the outcome and then figure out where you need to be on the investment, then the equation starts to make sense and you can basically start backfilling all the channels of, all right, so these are all the goals that we talked about. Um, this digital program needs to address these goals. We're going to prioritize this, this, and that, and then put this other stuff on the back burner. This is what we're going to focus on first, and this is where we need to be in three months, six months, nine months. Then it's a real business plan. It's, it's, it's real. It's not just, oh, this weird social media stuff that the kids do. Um, yeah. if, if you can do that, the rest just becomes uh, mostly, yeah, just tactical. It's just about execution at that point. Yeah. All right. So, Tamala, I am going to um, say goodbye for right now because Tamala is the co-host. She needs to jump off really quickly and go take care of some other things. So, bye, Tamala. Bye. Wonderful spending the afternoon bye. with you all. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. And then I want to, um, as we go to one last question, you know, I wanted to... Um, you know, take it back from social media only and look at, you know, there's a lot that's happening with digital strategy. I, f I feel like um, whether it is looking at the ways that uh, we ask questions to the air and that, you know, we have uh, these these responses to our voices asking questions, whether it, and what that means for people. Um, whether it's looking at the Internet of Things or machine learning or AI, there's there's so many, you know, new developments and new technologies that are challenging, I think, for, you know, someone in a CIO position, someone who's trying to head up, you know, these different efforts at their organizations to to take on. And so. I guess my my final question to you is, you know, if you had to say all right, guys, um, you know, all of these things in mind and not knowing exactly what it is that they're focused on, where do you think people should invest their time in learning more right now? Where should they, right. you know? Um, that, that's a really good question. So um, obviously they should read my blog and all my books. Well, clearly. Um, place to start, right? <laughs> uh, No, but I mean, for real, it is. Um, but I, I think... You know, the, the, the whole notion of digital transformation in general is that we're, we're going through really kind of disruptive, transformative times uh, right now, mainly because of, of this kind of like a revolution in, in digital technologies. So you have cloud computing, which, uh, which allows small businesses to have the same kind of, you know, on-demand processing capacity uh, in, in terms of, you know, just IT capabilities. Uh, than uh, than major companies, so there's there's a lot of stuff that you can do now that doesn't require an expensive IT investment, that doesn't require you know really expert IT expertise. It's just 
essentially, you know, IT services on the cloud. Um, yeah. So that's that's uh, you know storage. It's it's com computing capacity. It's it's cognitive computing. It's uh, it's data analysis. It's it's all kinds of stuff. So you can save a lot of money internally by by switching to a kind of hybridized, more evolved and more agile IT system for your for your organization. Whether you've got three people in it or five thousand. Um, collaboration is also much easier now, uh, in part because of mobile devices, but also because of a lot of collaboration tools that exist now that didn't exist five years ago. So you don't have to use email for everything anymore internally. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really easy for uh, project teams to collaborate using tools like Cisco Spark or uh, what is it, Microsoft Teams, like Facebook is an option too. There's Slack. There's, there's a whole bunch of, of app-based collaboration suites that exist today that are fairly inexpensive, very effective, and that can accelerate the, the pace of, uh, uh, of work uh, for, for teams, especially if they're spread out around the country or around the world. So that's kind of cool too. And, and a lot of them now are getting really good in regards to end-to-end -end security. So you don't mm -hmm. have to worry so much about you know, your, your data or your conversations ending up where they don't belong. Uh, cybersecurity obviously is is a huge thing. That's also, yeah. even though there are more attacks now than there used to be, the uh, the, the cybersecurity suites that are out there are actually much more robust than they used to be. And and so the the fear versus risk factor seems upside down when you read the media and when you talk to CEOs. Um, if you talk to IT professionals, it's actually backwards. We're getting much better at uh, at uh, Eliminating the risk of hacks. Uh, the the biggest problem with data security is people. It's not actually the technology. It's, so <laughs> right. no, it, it, it's true. So and and by a lot. Uh, so there's that. And then there's also a, a way with new technologies. Like you know, we didn't get a chance to really get into the IoT. Um, but smart objects, smart environments, uh, voice recognition. Um, mm -hmm. These things make. These things have the opportunity, the, the the capability of of taking a business model that that works and that exists today, and taking it in a different direction, uh, expanding its capabilities. And I, I think there's an opportunity for association leaders to by exploring what these technologies can do, and, and especially what they'll be able to use five years from now, uh, to kind of you know go in different directions with with how they do things, with how they raise money, how they raise awareness. Uh, how they embed themselves in the everyday lives of uh, of the people that they're trying to reach. So whether it's it's you know delivering solutions to you know a village in Africa that's trying to do something, or delivering education to uh, rural areas in the United States, uh, whatever it is, uh, there are new technologies out there that that allow associations to to become to create more value for right. their audience, for the people they're trying to serve, and for themselves. And, uh, yeah. and I really encourage people in those organizations to kind of have a, a weekly or a monthly discussion where, you know, for instance, they could, everybody goes out and tries to find an article or a new technology or something that's interesting to them. Think about how they might be able to apply it to, to the current model and come back and report on it and say, this is what I found. Um, and then just see where that goes. And that's a, a really basic process um, that, uh, that I think should be, uh, that should be part of pretty much every organization. It's, it doesn't take that much time. It doesn't, it's, you know, you're talking about a 15, 20 minute meeting once a month, maybe it's not going to make a huge difference in everybody's schedule. I'm just uh, over here on the side on Crowdcast. People are saying, yes, great process. Yes, wonderful suggestion. And yes, uh, they love it. And I knew that they would love you. I'm so glad that you came on to the show today. Um, if people want to find out more information or get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to do that? All right. So one way is to look for me on Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'll be gone for like three days and all of a sudden I'll just have like 50 tweets. So I, I, <laughs> it's up and down. Uh, but yeah. the, uh, the, the, the Twitter handle is OA Blanchard. So it's basically my first mm -hmm. two initials and then my last name. Uh, and then also at uh, futurum.xyz, so that's F-U-T-U-R-U-M dot um, mm -hmm. xyz, not dot com or dot net. And uh, yeah, I, I, I post stuff there. So there's, there's always good stuff. And, and my colleagues also post really, really good content there. 
Uh, so if it, it should be like the first place you look for any kind of news or insights on digital transformation, we, we kind of own that. Yes. Space. I I absolutely love that site. And I mean, some of the, I, I, we were, you know, me and my co-hosts were talking about uh, sharing some of your articles from before. So it's a great place to go. Um, I really appreciate you being here. This has been absolutely amazing. What do you guys think? Uh, you on Facebook Live, you on Crowdcast, did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Olivier, thank you so much uh, for joining us this week on Association Chat. And I have to say, um, I hope that you'll come back again sometime. Uh, anytime. <laughs> okay, yeah. great. All right. So thank you so much. And everyone, you know, thank you for joining us for this week's Association Chat. We are going through such a transformation ourselves in having new co-hosts and trying new things, trying new formats. I want to give a special shout out to our sponsors, uh, Fontiva and Association Studios for their continued support. Please visit associationchat.com to find out more about these wonderful companies. If you're watching on Crowdcast right now, you have the ability to sign up for the Association Chat newsletter, which is another new feature for Association Chat. You can click on um, the button there and it will take you to the website. You can sign up on the pop-up that comes up. Um, and check out our sponsors tab. You can go and find out more about Fontiva and connect with them or Association Studios. And thanks again so much this week. You know, we're all about asking the questions and really digging into ways that we can provide value to this association community. And until next time, everyone, I want you to keep asking questions to learn every day. As Joseph Campbell once said, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Have a great week, everyone.